Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over maps in C++. So a map is a collection of key value pairs. So you can think of it as mapping a key to a value. And keys must be unique, whereas the values do not have to be unique. So for example, in the Python programming language, a map is actually called a dictionary. And that is because a dictionary is a good example of a map. So a dictionary maps vocabulary words to the definitions or the meanings. And the vocabulary words in a dictionary are unique. So you're not going to find a duplicate word in a dictionary, but you can find two words that can have the same exact meaning. Another example would be for pricing. So items are unique. It makes no sense to list an item twice in a catalog or menu. So the items have to be unique, but the prices do not have to be unique. So two items can have the same price. And finally, we also have counting. This is a, another common use case for a map. Basically, if you want to create a poll or survey or you want to count votes, then you would have unique candidates and the count does not have to be unique. So two candidates can have the exact same count, meaning they are tied in popularity. All right, so that's just the basic rundown of a map. Now let's start coding. So to begin, you need to include map in your code. And there are three different kinds of map. You have a map, unordered map, and multi-map. Let's start with map. I will go over unordered map and multi-map later on. So I'm going to use the second example with pricing. And let's say I create a map. And in this case, we need to specify the two types, one for the key and one for the value. So I'm going to create a map of fruits and map each fruit to the price. So for the key, I'm just going to make it the string type, which will represent the name of the fruit. And for the price, I will do float. Okay, so I have my map. So we're mapping a string to a float. And right now the map is empty, but I can add a key value pair. Basically, I will do fruits and let's do apple. And I'm going to set the price to 110. So this is called the setter syntax. Basically, I'm setting a key value pair. So I'm setting the value 110 to the key apple. So this is similar to a vector, except instead of putting a string here, in a vector, you would use an integer for the index. And let's print out the value. So I'm going to do C out fruits apple. So if I pass in the key into the map, I'm going to get the value back. So let's save and run the program. And you can see we get 1.1, which is the same as 1.10. And I can use the same syntax to update the value of the key. So I can do fruits apple and let's say i want to change the value to 5.55 now if i save and run the program you can see we get 5.55 for apple so we updated the value of the key you can also use the at method so you can do fruits dot at key so apple and you can assign it 5.55 as well so if i comment this out and i save and run the program you can see we've updated the value of apple to be 5.55 now this at method is different from this set operator in that the key must exist first. So with the set operator, you would just set the value of the key and if it already exists, you would update it. Now if I comment this out, we are trying to set the value 5.55 to the key apple. So let's save and run the program and see what happens. And you can see we get an error and that is because in order to use the at method, this key must already exist in the map. So what happens if I comment this out and I try to print out the value of Apple if it does not exist in the map? So using the get operator, let's see what happens. And you can see we get zero. So it doesn't throw an error. And in C++, if you get a zero in this case, this means nothing. And if I were to do the same, but using the at method, so if I do C out fruits dot at Apple and I comment this out, Let's see what happens if I try to use this method to print out the value of a key that does not exist. And just as you might have expected, we get the same error as when we try to set a value to the key that does not exist. Okay, so that is the main difference between using the set and get operators and the at method. Basically, with the at method, we would get an error if the key does not already exist. All right, so that's how we can add a key value pair and get the value of a key what if I want to iterate through the map and print out all the key value pairs? 
So to do so, I would use a for loop, and under the hood, a map actually stores the key value as a pair. So I went over pairs in a previous video, so if you want to check that out, I will link the video in the description below. But basically, we have a pair. We have two values here. So I can just do for pair string float, and I'll call it fruit in fruits, I can print out the key and value for this specific entry. So I can do C out. And because we have a pair, I would do fruit dot first and fruit dot second. All right, now let's save and run the program. And you can see we get apple as the key and the value is 1.1. Since maps are basically a collection of pairs, well, technically they are a collection of nodes, which are a wrapper for pairs, I can directly insert a pair into a map. So I can do fruits.insert pair string float, and here I can put banana 1.50. So now if I save and run the program, you can see we have two key value pairs in our map. We have apple 1.1 and banana 1.5. And with pairs, we don't have to specify the typing. If we just do make pair. Okay, so if I save and run the program, you can see we get the same exact results. So we have banana 1.5 over here. And actually, with pairs, I can also use the initializing syntax. So if I just copy and paste this and come with this out, instead of using the make pair function, I can just use the curly braces. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get the same exact results. So this syntax is more convenient to use. You don't have to type out make pair. So using the insert method with pairs is a very convenient way to add an entry in the map. But I do want to note something, and that is unlike with the set operator or the at method, the insert method will not update the key value pair. So for instance, if I copy and paste this and I change this to 250. So I'm inserting banana 1.5 and then banana 2.5. If I save and run the program, you can see banana stays as 1.5. And if I comment this out and I do fruits of banana and I set it to 1.5 over here and I save and run the program, you can see banana is 1.5. So even though we ran fruits.insert banana 2.5, it does not update the value of banana because the key already exists. So you cannot use the insert method to update the value of a key if it already exists. All right, so those are all the different ways to add and update key value pairs in a map. Now let's go to iterating again. And just like with vectors and sets, you can iterate through a map collection using an iterator. So the iterator syntax looks something like this. For map of string, float, and then you have the double colon iterator. So that is the type of the iterator. And I'll do equal to fruits dot begin, it not equal to fruits dot end. And we increment the iterator, we will do C out it. And since this is an iterator, we will use the arrow operator. So here we have first. And then we have second. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get the same thing. And of course, typing all this out is very long. So you can just use the keyword auto and you can do the same over here as well. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get the same exact results. And there's another way to iterate through a map. And let's say you don't want to use first and second. Well, you can use the unpacking method Basically, we would assign a pair to two variables. So one variable gets first and the other variable gets second. So we went over this in the video on pairs. So I would do for auto and then brackets. And I can type in two variable names. So I can do fruit and price. So this would be key value colon fruits. And here I would just do see out fruit and price. So let's save and run the program. And yeah, we have three different for loops printing out the same thing. And of course, you can make this const reference and put an ampersand symbol there. And you can run it and you can see we get the same thing, okay? Except we have const reference on the variables. So I'm just going to delete these two and just keep the first one. All right, so we've gone over iterating through a map. 
Now let's talk about how to initialize a map with values. So I'm going to get rid of this. And if you want to initialize a map with values, you would just do curly braces and you would put your entries here as pairs. So I would do, let's say orange 1.25, apple 1.5, banana 2.20, pear 1.5 as well. And I would do lemon. So we have five fruits in our map. And if I save and run the program, you can see we get our five key value pairs. And of course, I can use the set operator to update the values. So I can do fruits of lemon. And let's say I want to change this to 199. I can just save that and run our program. And here you can see lemon is 199. Now the next thing I want to go over is unordered map. So currently we're using map and a map is sorted by default. So what that means is our keys are sorted alphabetically from A to Z. And if the keys were numbers, you would go from lowest to highest. So even though I have orange first and then apple and then banana, pear and lemon, if you look at the output, it is in alphabetical order. So we have apple, banana, lemon, orange, and pear. Okay. But if I change this to unordered map, and as a reminder, you would have to include unordered map. So if I change this to unordered map and I save and run the program, you can see it is no longer in sorted order and it's not even ordered by insertion. Even though we put orange, apple, banana, pear, lemon in that order, we get a different order when we print out the keys. Okay, so that's the difference between a map and unordered map. We also have the multi map and you might have guessed a multi map is a map that can have multiple keys. So the keys do not have to be unique. So I can't use this syntax because keys are no longer unique. So I can't do fruits of lemon and set it to 199. Instead, I would have to do fruits dot insert and I will use the pair syntax. So we're inserting lemon and I'll do 199 here. So now if I save and run the program, you can see we have two key value pairs for lemon. So the keys are no longer unique. So I generally don't use multi map. I think it would be better if you used a map and you had a string and a vector of floats. That way you can keep the key unique, but the value would just be multiple values. So for instance, maybe you want two different values for a key. So let's say I want to make two different prices for an item. One price would be for if you had a membership card and the other would be for if you don't have a membership card. So you can have multiple values with a single key if you were to just replace this with a vector of floats. Okay, let's change that back to map. And the last thing I want to go over is removing keys from a map. And to remove a key, all you have to do is fruits dot erase. And here I will just erase apple, for example. So this is going to erase this entry and remove this. So if I save and run the program, you can see apple is no longer in our map. We have four key value pairs now. And lemon is 2.25 because as I mentioned earlier, if you use insert, it's not going to update the value if the key already exists. And if you want to clear the map, you would do fruits dot clear. Okay, so if I save and run the program, you can see we've cleared the map, but we've inserted one key value pair immediately after. So that's why the map has one entry. Okay. All right. So that's maps in C++. Hopefully you found the video helpful. And if you did, make sure you give this video a like. And if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. If you want to stay up to date for more C++ tutorials like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.